That's Aaron, right? You must be Aaron. Hello, James. Hi, nice to meet you. Welcome to Witcher Bay. It's beautiful. Sorry we're late. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to come upstairs, have a drink? Love and to. And we'll have a chat about Love our to. adventures. Thank you. I'm originally from Northern Ireland, um, but I've been a resident in Guyana for 10 years. I've been visiting here for 15 years and I've been a Guyanese citizen for one year. Proudly. <laughs> I was brought up in an outsidey place on farms in Northern Ireland, but I think that it never occurred to me that people could live in a way that is so very different to how people live in the rest of the world. How does anybody find themselves in a far distant part of the world? I fell in love. Shadow, Shadow, can you hear me? Teddy and Ita is heading down the big swamp. All right, copy chat over, coming there now, over. Here we have this evolutionarily fantastical creature looking like an ancient animal, an ancient beast that you wouldn't even think exists. It looks ridiculous. It's got this ridiculous long nose, this ridiculous long tongue, and his mouth is at the end of the nose. It's very silly. People had been observing that they were not seeing as many anteaters as they used to see. The amount of research that's been done on giant anteaters in the wild is very limited. And you know what? We're actually finding out things that are new to science. As humans, we tend to think of ourselves as separate from or above other animals. But we might not be that different from our animal cousins. We've become separated from the natural world. And it's time to reconnect. This is a wild connection. I love Guyana. <laughs> I made Guyana my home because it's the most special place I ever went to. I can stand here on this veranda and I can breathe in air that nobody has breathed in in this country, right? For a thousand miles, no one has breathed in that air except maybe some birds. I see a mountain range of beautiful blue mountains. And in fact, there are mountains on all sides. And in the evening when the sun goes down and this place turns golden, that, that is wonderful to see. And I sit down here with a little glass of rum <laughs> and, um, and I look out and I think I'm in paradise. I'm so lucky to be here. How could I be here? The people of the South Rupununi really understand the necessity for taking care of the land. It's really in their hearts to do that. My name is Leroy Ignacio. I was born in a village named Shulinad village. Uh, the anteater, it's like an icon of the savannah. It's such a unique animal and, and, and they're there and nobody um, we really see this as an important species, but they're, they're, they're so important, we, we, you know, we, we do not understand them. What happened was about two and a half years ago, people from all the different communities, we all got together and we had a big meeting about or what our strategy would be for the next few years. Everybody is talking about conservation, biodiversity, protect our lands. And then we said, giant anteaters because people had been observing that they were not seeing as many anteaters as they used to see. The amount of research that's been done on giant anteaters in the wild is very limited. That pilot program we started off in Kutunur village. With the long-term goal that we would be able to get a baseline population estimate for anteaters in that area. If you have a baseline population estimate, then you can create some kind of conservation strategy. 
And you know what? We're actually finding out things that are new to science. Morning, Erin. Hi, James. Um, the vaqueros are ready to go. Um, we're just going to follow them into the savannah, looking for anteaters, and I, I hope that we'll be able to find something today. When we came to do our anteater work, we wanted to be able to track the anteaters. And we started off on motorbikes because they're faster. Um, well, that's mainly it, because they're faster. But we quickly found that there's much to be said for riding on horseback. Cowboys, they're, they're the ones that know the savannah pretty well. The cattle here, they're free range. Cowboys have to go in all directions. One of the best ways to move around cross country is by horseback. My father is a Amerindian, full Amerindian. He's a Wapshana tribe. And my mother also is a Wapshana tribe too. And I am a Wapshana tribe. And so I grew up, I started to learn about vaquero work, riding wild horses, roping wild animals in the savannas. We use horses to move silent. So the anteaters can't hear us when we are moving with the horses. I, I really enjoy myself mm, looking for anteaters, tracking anteaters, seeing anteaters. So it's really a good combination now that, that we're using. The cowboys who know the environment uh, know that combination of knowledge and skill is working towards conservation now. drive backwards into a freaking swamp, oh, just embarrass ourselves. Well, sorry, embarrass me. Ready? Yep. No, no, no. James, we just need to engage it. Hold on. I think it'll come out okay once it's engaged. Rupununi, especially the south, the accessibility is still limited. The roads pretty much um, still natural, right? You still find the south uh, a little more wilder because it's a little bit un more un untouched by the outside. The local knowledge is very important. Very few people get this far south. If they make it to Guyana, then they'll stop in the north. They'll see the north and the south is it's an extra distance to travel, but it is, it's worth it to come here. Of course, the locals have access to it here. And they're doing a pretty good job of, of keeping it real. Chato, Chato, can you hear me? Yes, over. Do you have, have you seen anything, any signs of anteaters anywhere? Just to direct you, there is, there is a fresh feeding spot to the west side of the bush, over. To the west side? To the west side of the bush. All right, so I'm going to travel along the road and I'll see you there. Copy that, over. Done that, over. Hi, Lee. Hi, Ari. You got some signs of the anteater? Uh -huh. Big marks and trucks. All right. Uh huh. Let's go. Uh -huh. We could walk there. So yeah, Shadow is right, right around here. You see the trucks, right? Uh huh. Aaron is close, close to this area here. We see some dig marks and some trucks head, heading into the bush here. So we can come, we can come down, Shadow, and we can walk with them. We just tie up our horse right here. Right, you see that? That's yeah. This is heavy, heavy, heavy. So it's a big one. You can see it's a big one that that's heading that way. But this right? is recent. This is a recent mark here. You can see this is recent because this morning it's fresh grass, yeah. um, get mash down there, right? You see the older grass. The wind already would kind of cover it up back a little bit. But here, here you can see it, it's fresh, especially when you get closer to where it's wet. You see? But this is a fresh one. You can see. You can see some moisture on the grass still from when he, when he pressed down mm. on the, um, the soil, right?
So th is that a, that's a footprint there, yeah, right? This is a footprint here. So I guess the bush is too thick here to follow it here. So we go out and we yeah. try to see if it comes out yeah. the other side. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Close behind. A couple hours though. <laughs> So the vaqueros are going to head out in different directions to see if they could see an anteater, maybe in the bush. Um, but we have our walkie-talkie, so we'll be able to keep in touch with them. It's full of batteries, so it's, it's natural beeping behavior there. One of the SRCS rangers has just come across a giant anteater. And giant anteaters have very poor vision, average hearing, but they have excellent sense of smell. And so we have to get on the right side of the wind. It's moving along on the long grass in a swamp in the lowland. So we've been able to follow it, um, keeping downwind so the animal cannot smell them, and moving slowly and quietly on horseback or just walking. Um, so that's going to be our strategy. We're not going to move too quickly. We don't want to startle the animal. They have um, a low metabolic rate and a low basal body temperature. That's because of the, the diet that they have of ants. So they're not really um, made to move quickly for long periods of time. Chado, could you just repeat that for me, over? Teddy and Eater is heading down the big swamp. The big swamp that I just walked over. Right over there to the east side, over. Okay. All right, copy chat over. Coming there now, over. So the anteater is under the big kayambi trees, over. Do you see where Leo and them are? Yeah, more to the front. More towards me on the next hill? To the swamp side, in the swamp then. Okay. All right, so just down the hill from me. I think it's in there. I often see anteaters, maybe more from a geological point of view. You would think that they're far too big to lose, right? But you could lose them in a swamp. You would think that you'd be able to tell an anteater from a mile away, you know what it is. But it looks exactly like a rock, right? It's just a rock that moves, and sometimes it doesn't move, so then it's just a rock so you can't find them at all. Here we have this evolutionarily fantastical creature looking like an ancient animal, an ancient beast that you wouldn't even think exists. It looks ridiculous. It's got this ridiculous long nose, this ridiculous long tongue, and his mouth is at the end of the nose. It's very silly. Um, <laughs> and its huge tail, right? It's far too long. Existing for millions of years, perfectly well suited to the environment. The environment's perfectly well suited to it. And um, yet, here we are, us annoying humans, trying to destroy it. Accidentally or on purpose. Erin, he's somewhere in here. It's in right. the swamp. I haven't seen it yet. Somewhere in the swamp. Yes. Walk very slowly like that. It minimizes the crashing of the leaves. Shadow's climbing this tree to see if he could see the anteater. So we're just going to wait for a signal from him and he'll tell us what he could see. And I always take advice from Shadow. <laughs> Local advice is best. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are in the land of giants and we've got a giant that can reach up to eight foot long from the tip of the nose to the tip of the tail that has disappeared right in front of us. And it always amazes me that animals, no matter how big they are, whether they be elephants or tigers or giant anteaters, can just disappear in plain sight, right in front of our eyes, like ghosts.
sleeping. It's sleeping. It's sleeping. It's sleeping. Happy to sleeping. Follow the steps that they are taking. followed her in here and she was comfortable enough just to lie down and fall asleep and that's perfect that's that's all we want that's perfect <laughs> I remember the very first time I was told by the people I was living with about giant anteaters it was an old lady well she's still there auntie Nellie she said that Anteater in the culture is known to be um, evil, not, not the animal, right? But in the culture, they're what we call the Kanaima. The Kanaima is the, the evil spirit. And this Kanaima, or sometimes Jombi, can take the form of a different animal. He chooses a lot of the time to disguise himself as an anteater but it's really a person who takes on an evil spirit and becomes evil. That's why the education is important to, to let people know that this is a tradition, but these animals actually are natural animals. They add a value to the environment because they eat a lot of termites. Because if you have a wooden house, if you don't have enough antithes around, termites eat out your house. And people will often say that they like having the anteaters around because they'll eat the ants from their farm and the ants destroy their farms. Most people realize that the, the anteater itself is, is not, what, what they say, not troubling anybody. It's not doing anybody any harm. So actually it's a wonderful animal, it's a wonderful species to do conservation work on because there is no real conflict with the anteaters and people. Very easy for anteaters and people to coexist. They actually help each other out. So we're heading this way because there's a camera trap right in this bush island that I want to check. We need to change the batteries and look at the data that we've got on it. This is a good location to put the camera traps because this is where the bush islands are and it's an excellent refuge for so the So this is a bush island over here? This is a bush island right here. Okay. Yes. So our trap is right over this little um, ditch. All right, so the reason we put the camera trap in this location is because we had some guests staying with us and we were looking for anteaters early one morning and we saw just behind us a mother anteater with a young one on her back. We followed the anteater and she made her way into this bush, right? So we, we let her go, we went back and had her breakfast and then a couple of hours later, we came right to this location. The water's come up a little bit though. We need some wellies. Just through here. 
can see why they like this area, huh? Yeah, it's nice, it's and nice and cool. sheltered. Mm -hmm. So this is where we put our camera trap right here. This ah. is, yes. Okay. So this is the SD card in here. This is trap number 19 for this area. Okay, so let's see what is inside. So this is going to be how many months worth of action? This will be two months. Two months. Look at this! Oh. This is excellent! It's a baby. No <laughs> way. This is the same young one. Well, it's a young one anyway. Might in be the, the same one, right? Well, I would expect, yeah. I mean, I think having two little ones this size in this area over four days is probably too much to ask for. <laughs> so you're saying roughly four months of age? Something like I that? think from, I'd say maybe four to six months. Okay. Because I've never actually seen a mother and a young one walking next to each other. I've seen them in camera traps, but I've never seen it um, out in the savannah. Mm. So I think it's only in places where they would feel safe. Well, this is my opinion. But this is a different anteater. Do you see the... Yeah, um, I see the, the difference. Yeah, it's climbing. <laughs> it's climbing the tree. It's climbing the tree, yeah. Yes. I've never heard of anteaters, of giant anteaters doing that. Well, I think this is something that new that we're um, observing in this area. So this is totally unique, new, new behavior that you, you're finding. I haven't read about this kind of um, activity anywhere else. And so, I mean, what, that, what I've just shown you there, that was the small young anteater, that was this adult anteater, and that other climbing anteater, that's three individuals passing through here recently. Over quite a short period of time, it became possible to identify the individuals based on their unique, the unique combination of markings that they have. And then we found there were multiple individuals arriving at these scratching trees over actually quite short periods of time. So in, in one location, even over eight days, there were four or five different anteaters arriving there. And remember, these anteaters are supposed to be solitary creatures. They weren't interacting with each other directly, but they're coming to the same location and marking it, sometimes climbing it, rubbing against it, sniffing it. So they're definitely communicating with each other at those locations. And that was something novel that um, we didn't never expect it to find. So we identified these individual anteaters and then we named them. So the, we have an anteater called, well, anything I could come up with really. So I need some more names for anteaters. I've already named them after all my friends and my mother and my sister and my granny and <laughs> everybody else. Um, so that's how we're getting to know these anteaters really personally. So here I am, I am not a biologist, right, I'm a geologist, with a set of other people who are not biologists, they're vaqueros, they're cowboys, they're farmers, they're ranchers, they're teachers, and off we go out and trying to do some science, work out what's going on. So far on the farm road you gotta go, let somebody be there to warn us before we come too close. And I'm on the right hand side on the hill like this. Roger that, roger that, and how is the wind, how is the wind? So we're coming good, we're coming good? He's right there. They're very threatened in this place here. You, you can't find so much anteaters anymore. So I want to teach my son about this anteater so he must learn how to track and how to monitor and how he must keep them, he must know them, where they are living, where they feed, where they sleep. So later on time when I get older, I wouldn't be able to go, go out like how I'm going out now. So there is my son to represent me to do all the works that I have done in this place here to make sure the anteaters are around all the time for the future. For me, as a, as a person that's in conservation tourism, would like to see a lot more of Ghana on, like, protected, protected by the people around them. Right? I think each part of Ghana should have um, persons looking after their environment. It shouldn't really be somebody come and tell you what to do. So for Rupununi, we're working towards having each community have 
a safe zone for the animals. Once people understand the dangers, the threats, the benefits of, the, of nature, it's going to make a change, right? And if we start in Rupununi, then we can, we can spread out to the rest of Guyana. I think our work here is not just for the small community, but I think it benefits the whole world in, at large. I came here when I was 18 years old. Um, I was a gap year student, and I came to work in a, a primary school in a little tiny remote village. And every afternoon the kids would come and bring water for us. At home they would send guavas for us or food for us to eat. And we really felt like we had become part of a, a community. And when I left the village, I remember saying to Justin, how am I ever going to repay the people in that village for looking after like us like that, like their own children, when we hadn't got a clue what was going on? He said, don't worry, you'll find a chance, right? So that's how I feel about the Rupununi now, is that I have had all the privileges of having been brought up in a developed society, having been well educated. And if I could come and live here and try and pay back a little bit of what they gave me, that's something that valuable that I could do. And this little bit of work that we're doing has only been a year and a half. Already we are being able to discover new things and I think potentially have a positive impact on the future of anteaters in this area. Are you going to talk with the camera?